Welcome to Chapter 9, Molecular Biology. So in this chapter, we are going to go over the structure of DNA, DNA replication, transcription, translation, and how genes are regulated. Introduction. The three letters DNA have now become associated with crime solving, paternity testing, human identification, and genetic testing. DNA can be retrieved from hair, blood, or saliva. Side note, I've also recovered DNA from a Cheez-It. With the exception of identical twins, each person's DNA is unique and it is possible to detect differences between human beings on the basis of their unique DNA sequence. DNA analysis has many practical applications beyond forensics and paternity testing. DNA testing is used for tracing genealogy and identifying pathogens. In the medical field, DNA is used in diagnostics, new vaccine development, and cancer therapy. It is now possible to determine predisposition to many diseases by analyzing genes. DNA is the genetic material passed from parent to offspring for all life on Earth. The technology of molecular genetics developed in the last half century has enabled us to see deep into the history of life to deduce the relationships between living things in ways never thought possible. It also allows us to understand the workings of evolution in populations of organisms. Over a thousand species have had their entire genome sequenced, and there have been thousands of individual human genome sequences completed. These sequences will allow us to understand human disease and the relationship of humans to the rest of the tree of life. Finally, molecular genetics techniques have revolutionized plant and animal breeding for human agricultural needs. All of these advances in biotechnology depend on basic research leading to the discovery of the structure of DNA in 1953, and the research since then has uncovered the details of DNA replication and the complex process leading to the expression of DNA in the forms of proteins in the cell. Section 1. The Structure of DNA By the end of this section, you will be able to describe the structure of DNA, describe how eukaryotic and prokaryotic DNA is arranged in the cell. In the 1950s, Francis Crick and James Watson worked together at the University of Cambridge, England, to determine the structure of DNA. Other scientists, such as Linus Pauling and Maurice Wilkins, were also actively exploring this field. Pauling had discovered the secondary structure of proteins using X-ray crystallography. X-ray crystallography is a method for investigating molecular structure by observing the patterns formed by X-rays shot through a crystal of the substance. The patterns give important information about the structure of the molecule of interest. In Wilkins' lab, researcher Rosalind Franklin was using X-ray crystallography to understand the structure of DNA. Watson and Crick were able to piece together the puzzle of the DNA molecule using Franklin's data. Not necessarily with her permission. Actually, not uh, with, without her permission. I'll just flat out say it, without her permission. Watson and Crick also had key pieces of information available from other researchers, such as Chargraff's rules. Chargraff had shown that the four kinds of monomers, nucleotides, present in a DNA molecule, two types were always present in equal amounts, and the remaining two types were also always present in equal amounts. This meant that they were always paired in some way. In 1962, James Watson, Francis Crick, and Maurice Wilkins were awarded the Nobel Prize in Medicine for their work in determining the structure of DNA. Now, Rosalind Franklin did not get the Nobel Prize because she had died, and they don't award the Nobel Prize posthumously. Here is a movie from the 1980s that technically only appears on VHS, that you can see if you Google it, demonstrating the race for the double helix, and it kind of shows all of the drama behind the scenes that went on around this discovery. It has a very young Jeff Goldblum in it. Now let's consider the structure of the two types of nucleic acid. Deoxyribonucleic acid, DNA, 
and ribonucleic acid, RNA. The building blocks of DNA are nucleotides, which are made up of three parts. A deoxyribose, which is a five carbon sugar, a phosphate group, and a nitrogenous base, as seen in this figure. There are four types of nitrogenous bases in DNA. Adenine and guanine are double ringed purines and cytosine and thymine are smaller single ringed pyrimidines. The nucleotide is named according to the nitrogenous base it contains. The phosphate group of one nucleotide bonds covalently with the sugar molecule of the next nucleotide and so on, forming a long polymer of nucleotide monomers. The sugar phosphate groups line up in a backbone for each single strand of DNA and the nucleotide bases stick out from this backbone. The carbon atoms of the five carbon sugar are numbered clockwise from the oxygen as one prime, two prime, three prime, four prime, and five prime. The phosphate group is attached to the five prime carbon of one nucleotide and the three prime carbon of the next nucleotide. In its natural state, each DNA molecule is actually composed of two single strands held together along their length with hydrogen bonds between the bases. Watson and Crick proposed that the DNA is made up of two strands that are twisted around each other to form a right-handed helix called a double helix. Base pairing takes place between purine and pyrimidines, namely A pairs with T and G pairs with C. In other words, adenine and thymine are complementary base pairs and cytosine and guanine are also complementary base pairs. This is the basis for Chargraff's rule. Because of their complementarity, there is as much adenine as thymine in a DNA molecule and as much guanine as cytosine. Adenine and thymine are connected by two hydrogen bonds and cytosine and guanine are connected by three hydrogen bonds. The two strands are anti-parallel in nature, that is one strand will have the three prime carbon of the sugar in the upward position, whereas the other strand will have the five prime carbon in the upward position. The diameter of the DNA double helix is uniform throughout because a purine, two rings, always pairs with a pyrimidine, one ring, and their combined lengths are always equal. The structure of RNA. There is a second nucleic acid in all cells called ribonucleic acid or RNA. Like DNA, RNA is a polymer of nucleotides. Each of the nucleotides in RNA is made up of a nitrogenous base, a five carbon sugar, and a phosphate group. In the case of RNA, the five carbon sugar is ribose, not deoxyribose. Ribose has a hydroxyl group at the two prime carbon unlike deoxyribose, which has only a hydrogen atom. RNA nucleotides contain the nitrogenous bases adenine, cytosine, and guanine. However, they do not contain thymine, which is instead replaced by uracil, symbolized by a U. RNA exists as a single-stranded molecule rather than a double-stranded helix. Molecular biologists have named several kinds of RNA on the basis of their function. This includes messenger RNA, transfer RNA, and ribosomal RNA, molecules that are involved in the production of proteins from the DNA code. How DNA is arranged in the cell. DNA is a working molecule. It must be replicated when a cell is ready to divide, and it must be read to produce the molecules, such as proteins, to carry out functions in the cell. For this reason, the DNA is protected and packaged in very specific ways. In addition, DNA molecules can be very long. Stretched end to end, the DNA molecules in a single human cell would come to a length of about two meters. Thus, the DNA for a cell must be packaged in a very ordered way to fit and function within a structure, the cell, that is not visible to the naked eye. The chromosomes of prokaryotes are much simpler than those of eukaryotes and many of their features. Most prokaryotes contain a single circular chromosome that is found in an area in the cytoplasm called the nucleoid. The size of the genome in one of the most well-studied prokaryotes, Escherichia coli, 
is 4.6 million base pairs, which would extend a distance of about 1.6 millimeters if stretched out. So how does this fit inside a small bacterial cell? The DNA is twisted beyond the double helix into what is known as supercoiling. Some proteins are known to be involved in the supercoiling. Other proteins and enzymes help in maintaining the supercoiled structure. Eukaryotes, whose chromosomes each consist of a linear DNA molecule, employ a different type of packing strategy to fit their DNA inside the nucleus. At the most basic level, DNA is wrapped around proteins known as histones to form structures called nucleosomes. The DNA is wrapped tightly around the histone core. This nucleosome is linked to the next one by a short strand of DNA that is free of histones. This is also known as the beads on a string structure. The nucleosomes are the beads and the short lengths of DNA between them are the string. The nucleosomes with their DNA coiled around them stacked compactly onto each other to form a 30 nanometer wide fiber. This fiber is further coiled into a thicker and more compact structure. At the metaphase stage of mitosis, when the chromosomes are lined up in the center of the cell, the chromosomes are at their most compacted. They are approximately 700 nanometers in width and are found in association with scaffold proteins. In interphase, the phase of the cell cycle between mitoses, at which the chromosomes are decondensed, eukaryotic chromosomes have two distinct regions that can be distinguished by staining. There is a tightly packed region that stains darkly and a less dense region. The darkly staining region usually contains genes that are not active and are found in the regions of the centromere and telomeres. The lightly staining regions usually contain genes that are active with DNA packaged around nucleosomes, but not further compacted. And that brings us to the end of section one, the structure of DNA. Tune in next time for section two, DNA replication.